minutes north of the attractions at the Main Street Pier in Daytona is the historic town of Ormond Beach. While Daytona receives most of the attention for being home to the world's most famous beach and the world center of racing, it's Ormond Beach that claims the title Birthplace of Speed. It was on this compacted sand at the turn of the 20th century where the first speed tournaments in the U.S. were held. Pioneers of the industry made their mark here, paving the way for the creation of stock car racing and NASCAR. Ormond Beach offers hints of that early racing history, along with reminders of when America's richest man called this place his winter home. It's a laid-back town with some wonderful architectural jewels along Granada Boulevard, many housing locally owned coffee shops, bars, and restaurants. So today, Abby and I will be exploring a little bit of history and some of the mom and pop gems that make this place so special. Coming up next, seven places you can't miss in Ormond Beach. <laughs> We start the day at the beachside end of Granada Bridge, an iconic high clearance structure that sees more than 35,000 vehicles per day. You actually grew up in a house not too far from here, just over the bridge. I did, and you've also called Ormond home. So these are our old stomping grounds. We know Ormond very well. What you see behind me was the winter residence to the wealthiest American who ever lived, John D. Rockefeller. It was constructed in 1913 and Rockefeller purchased it and moved into it in 1918. Built overlooking the Halifax River, the mansion gets its name from the many casement windows that helped keep the interior cool a necessity in Florida's subtropical climate. The definition of the word tycoon, Rockefeller had earned his fortune in the oil industry and was 78 years old when he chose the casements as his winter retreat. This is the place where Rockefeller died on May 23, 1937, less than two months shy of his 98th birthday. Self-guided tours are available at the casements Monday through Saturday. You can see the sun porch Rockefeller had enclosed and furnished with wicker furniture and the impressive octagonal atrium that he used as the formal living room. Much of the historic house is used by the city for community workshops and events. On the second floor is the Rockefeller room, a space where you can get a peek at some of the original furnishings. A buddy of Rockefeller's and the man who would come to be known as the father of modern Florida had a hotel in Ormond and benefited from those early races on the beach. To accommodate all the gearheads, Henry Flagler had the Ormond Garage constructed, the original gasoline alley. A garage similar to this one was the staging area for competitors going for the land speed record. While Flagler's historic garage burned to the ground in the mid-1970s, you can visit the smaller recreation at Birthplace of Speed Park. Look through the windows and you'll see actual cars inside. Inside are replicas of Bullet Number 1 and the Pirate Automobiles. The park overlooks the beach where the early races were held and has some additional markers celebrating those landmark events. For years, this was an old warehouse. Today, it is a restaurant and brew house known as the Ormond Garage. This restaurant pays tribute to its namesake with auto-themed museum quality vintage pieces. As soon as you walk in, you're greeted by this replica of the famed 1906 Stanley Steamer Rocket. Windows sport turn of the century photos, and don't forget to look up into the rafters. The garage menu features elevated bar food, kicked up a notch or two with their own spices and sauces. One of their signature burgers with seasoned Sidewinder fries, always a good choice. Crispy, done to perfection. Love them. 
These tacos are just overflowing. I got the buffalo chicken taco. It comes with the buffalo chicken, romaine lettuce, pico, and cheese and ranch on it. In our opinion, the star of the Orman Garage menu, believe it or not, they're Wisconsin cheese curds. Let's see if we get a cheese pool. <laughs> so this is their signature Baja dip. Mm. <laughs> Just provides the right amount of tang and spicy to go along with these cheese curds. Definitely a winner. Hickory Creation is the brainchild of owner Liz Huber, who you might recognize from her numerous appearances on Food Network, especially the show Cake Wars. Yes, wedding cakes are a big part of what they do here, but they also do a lot of smaller sweet temptations like cake pops, cookies, and of course what we're here to try today, their cupcakes. There are so many flavor choices in this little shop. Some look like works of art. After making your choices, there's a courtyard deck out back where you can sample your purchases. I'm not the biggest cupcake person, but the coconut and the Florida orange and the key lime, those were just too tempting to pass up. So you talked me into them, didn't you? I did. They look so good. This is such a good cupcake. I could eat a whole batch of these. Everything that you think Florida is, is in this cupcake. So this one is the s'mores cupcake. It has a chocolate cake with buttercream frosting on the top of it, with a chocolate ganache, a thing of marshmallow, a piece of graham cracker, and then a Hershey bar on top. You wanna try it now? I'm so excited to try it, yes. I got a little bit of the cake, the icing, a little piece of marshmallow. It does taste like a s'more. It's very good, but it is very rich. Might be the richest thing I've ever eaten. <laughs> In the historic building next door is a third wave specialty coffee shop housed inside a custom frame business. Gold Leaf Coffee serves up some of the strongest, best tasting coffee in Ormond Beach. I opted for the Hot Flat White, which has more espresso per size than a latte, cappuccino, or Americano. It gave me all the pickup I needed to finish this list. Can you believe this waterfall is part of an urban oasis in the middle of Ormond Beach? That's right, you're not in Hawaii. Steps from the Atlantic Ocean is Ormond Memorial Art Museum and Gardens. This unique slice of paradise was founded in 1946 as a tribute to creative freedom and those who fought valiantly to defend it. There are military tributes scattered around the property that features both manicured landscape and natural areas. Enjoy the solitude of a quiet bench or walk the labyrinth inside the gazebo for a nice little mental challenge. While there are a lot of historic ruins you can visit all around Florida, these on Cali Grande Street are probably the most unique. They date back to the mid-1920s. That's when an ambitious grand community was planned on a 1,200-acre lot. Rio Vista on the Halifax was to include small winter cottages, a grand hotel, zoo, and canals dug for canoes and gondolas. But a devastating hurricane and the stock market crash of 1929 doomed the project, and it was never completed. These Romanesque archways and columns are remnants from the Rio Vista days and were intended to be the entranceway. The concrete pillars were painted to look like marble, 
while friezes depicting chariots and toga-clad statesmen were installed above the arches. Their location on a busy neighborhood street have resulted in abuse over the years, but they remain a hauntingly beautiful curiosity for people who happen upon them. I just wonder how many people pass by these relics every day and don't know the true history behind them. That's it, seven can't miss things in Ormond Beach. We have more videos about Ormond and the surrounding area on the channel, so be sure to check them out. Thank you so much for watching from Ormond Beach, Florida. Happy gallivanting.